Warner's going to come join us. Is that cool? Nice. All right. Let's. I just got to forward him the I invite. To, yeah. I got to get him. I get him the invite to the meeting. He's all got a little more cray cray now. <laughs> We're going to get wild now. There he is. Oh, what's up? There he is. Hello. How are you guys in England doing? Is it still cold? Good. It's guys beautiful here in DC. It's like seventy degrees and cherry blossoms and uh, high winds and uh, you know all that kind of. Oh, there's a protest outside of the Watergate today. Oh. You know, that that the uh, Saudi embassy. Oh yeah. <laughs> How's that going? The protest. It's spilling into the streets, and they got cops everywhere. But the protest signs uh, say something in English, but they're so complicated, you you got to get right up to the sign to even know what they're protesting against. <laughs> Figure it out. Well, so that happens like every every day. <laughs> you were getting wrapped up in the esoteric and theosophical influences of ufology before you popped in, so I'm pretty sure you can jump on that bandwagon. Oh, yeah, you uh, <laughs> um, I... Uh, <laughs> what do I know? Tell us everything you know, John Warner. <laughs> the occult is, is is knowledge, and it's also knowledge of communication with higher beings. There you so go. That's, that's ET. I mean, we're all galactic citizens. You know, Earth people are just you know young and dumb and violent, but you know, so were others. And so I think the occult comes in where. It's all drills down to Zeptepi Egypt and the priest caste who were psychic, presumably. I think all the, that's where the secret society is and everything. It was all psychic members because, you know, they could talk to higher intelligence and, and, and understand things like we do. And so they got bored with the hoi polloi and the lower people. And I'm like, well, shit, let's form a society and so we can talk. And so that's what, I mean, the four of us constitute, you know, an ad hoc secret society. I mean, how many people in the world understand what we're into? I mean, you know, John D. If he and Kelly, you know, were doing Babylonian rituals, and so they were in contact with higher forces. I think uh, I don't know about the Spanish Armada thing, but you know, they were able to do some things. You know, it's it's very curious because Queen Elizabeth the first, uh, being of the royal bloodline and all that jazz. If you look up. Queen Elizabeth I, the famous painting is she's in all this garb. Well, what's sewn onto her garb? And it's jewels. And as mm -hmm. we know, gems and jewels are energetic. And so presumably, and of course she's wearing a crown or a tiara or something. Mm -hmm. These were all psionic enhancements for the royal bloodlines. They were the ones who could afford it. And, you know, and then the paintings show everyone with a halo. Well, in the Renaissance, those were all, you know, Medici's or clergy or kings. You know, the Medici isn't, they were in the families of Italy, the royal, you know, the royal bloodline families. And so that just meant you were, weren't holy, holy, you know, whatever that, it just meant you, you were continued with your psionic and maybe some telekinesis in there. And that's and how powerful families stayed rich and presumably, I think. And powerfuls, I mean, everyone was stabbing and poisoning each other with rapidity. <laughs> so that's like, you know, at, but I think that's what it what it is. And so crowns and tiaras and scepters and the globe and the British royal family, these are, you know, whether they work today with the royal, the royal bloodlines might be pretty watered down by now. Hmm. What do you but think? in the old days, that's why they interbred so that wasn't to get the Habsburg jaw. It was they were trying to keep their psionic abilities alive because they had to know who was coming around the corner with a knife. You see oh, they communicate I mean? and then communicate to whoever they were too, right? Like right. Couple, and, and and let's just talk about Elizabeth the first. She's badass. And so, you know, she's sitting there in the court with John D and John D's whispering in her ear and she's like, you know, I'm looking at this guy. He's got, you know, I can read his mind. He's got duplicity on him. And so, no, is that not. how the royals were, were kept so powerful? Although a lot of them were murdered. Did you guys see the, the the weird video footage of Elizabeth's funeral procession where there was there was that strange interruption of the news feed and there was a pretty weird scent yeah. said by this like female voice that some people think sounds eerily like Princess Diana. You know about this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it was no the return. Return. Yeah, like it, 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 death it, it, is irreversible. 
yeah, it, yeah, it was legit because it was actually it like people have got recordings of it from the news from like when it was live and it's like a camera panning of the funeral procession and like there's a news anchor a male news anchor talking about the funeral and then it cuts and this woman's voice comes in and says the death is irreversible and the fact that she is trapped and then it cuts out and it's just this really weird little moment that people captured and nobody really knows what it means and then they tried to fob it off and they said oh it was a hot mic and it was a woman, it was a grief counsellor who was there for children. And it was like, bro, like none of what she said contextually makes sense for speaking to children about anything. The death is irreversible and the fact that she's trapped. As you can see, as you can see here in London, it is a lovely day. And as the hearse heads out into West London. And everything around them is weird. Like, like, Ross, <laughs> heavily connected to the esoteric, the occult. Like, I mean, you know where... Uh, Warner, you've met them. Shit, you know they're weird. Yeah, I see. Uh, you, get a, you get a very weird vibe. Um, uh, let's see, I met the Queen three times. And when I was little, I met the rest of the family. Um, That's crazy. Seven, yeah. and, and that then I, no, it was 13, 14 or 13 or 14. Um, but yeah, it's weird. And I never understood like why it was such a big deal. And then my sister knows everything about royals. She's not a conspiracy, although well, she is a little bit. Mm. And because we talk about these weird bloodlines, and she's like, because she's met a lot of royal people over the world in her lifetime. She's a little kooky, but uh, she's very smart. And uh, she met Epstein and uh, Gislaine somewhere. Oh, damn. Um, oh. She was in those highfalutin circles, and I said, you know, she said, well, I made a lot of friends, but you get a, a real weird vibe around the royal royals. Hmm. And, you know, the last, let's see, the last time I saw Queen Elizabeth was 2007, so that's when my dad got a KBE, and uh, she was sitting alone in a room in Windsor Castle, and we were talking about the repairs and everything, and it's, I don't know, I, you know, I, and it's like she's sitting there and you're you're like, here's this powerful woman and she's just sort of really boring. <laughs> but, you know, I admire her World War II efforts. She was a mechanic and a truck driver. Yeah, that's yeah. rad. So I, I wrote it in my new book. She she set a party at the Savoy Hotel at the v Victory Europe Day. Um, but, you know, I think those royal people... Um, Gosh, you know, the, this bloodline thing is just so weird. Um, it doesn't matter if it, like, if it's overblown or something. There's a lot of people that take it really seriously. I have a friend, and she's hooked up with this Dragon Society of Scotland, and they have this funky website. It just looks silly, and she's like, don't let the website fool you. These are serious people. Hmm. And um, I... I did my. They did my father, so I know I'm related to James II and Robert the Bruce, the, the Stuart bloodline. But the Mellon bloodline, they said, it's been washed. <laughs> you can't and find any information on it. You can, but it's 23 and me shit. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Mormons did my dad's genealogy, and so I know I'm related to Wild Bill Hickok. Interesting. And you can't get any of that shit in 23 Media. That's all junk. That's all CIA, you know, just databasing people. But they're looking for people with weird genetics for sure. Yeah. Um, and this, my friend, is one of those people, and, and she's been in some of these programs in the military industrial complex. And that's her story. So, and I believe her, but she says that um, you just look at the circumstantial evidence. The, the British royal family doesn't... Uh, hang out with people it doesn't consider part of the bloodline club and so my great grandfather hung out he was ambassador to england 31 so he knew them uh and then paul mellon i think he told me he met queen elizabeth at the end of world war ii in london and they were fast friends ever since they had the horse racing thing in common she would come stay with him in upperville virginia i think she came two or three times and I have an article in the local papers that said, you know, Paul Mellon, uncountry ambassador to the, to the British royal family. And so I have uh, I have that uh, proof that she did come. My mom remembers. I, I remember because he has his own jet strip. 
you know, they would fly in on a private jet. Mm-hmm. And, um, and went one day. But um, so the Mellons and the British royal family, I mean, what the heck? Um, you know, it's, I thought it was no big deal. You know, I thought, oh, just rich people shit. You know, my sister was like, no. Uh, they wouldn't be allowed. She wouldn't be allowed to have a friend in, in my grandfather unless he was, you know, bloodline okay. related. Oh, you know, wow. yeah, you know, like you're clear. Yeah, the, the British family doesn't come to stay with you. Your home. you know, this was the Queen, Prince Philip, and Charles and Diana back in the eighties. I know, I remember that. So my mom says, "Come on over, we'll we'll meet Diana and Charles." And I said, "No, nah, I got a party. Your friends to go to fuck the wells." <laughs> I didn't care. Uh, I, I really did. Your but, bloodline, though, right? Is like it's. You know, I mean, if you get into all that stuff, it's Stuart and Robert the Bruce. So Robert the Bruce was Templar Knight. He's a Templar. Yeah, uh, so he's a Templar. I'm going to be a Templar uh, Saturday. By the way, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting the whole. I'm being knighted as a Templar on Saturday. Ask, tell him you want to be a Teutonic Knight. And you want to drink the blood, black blood from this black stone. So, ooh, <laughs> they have to heat it up. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to have to Silesia. You sure you, sure you want to be sipping from that stone, John? Uh, I yeah. I'll let you know how it goes. I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> don't, don't drink anything. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I'm hey, going drink to. this wine, the blood, blood of Moloch. Don't do <laughs> The blood of Moloch. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes. You no, know, like, Stuart's, they're like connected to the. Um, you know, like the Holy Blood, Holy Grail stuff. Yeah, Mary, Mary, Queen of Scots, is a yeah, distant yeah. relative. My sister used to make a big deal of that when we were kids. In fact, my sister Mary, she would call. Uh, they never got along. They still don't get along. They pull each other hairs out. But my sister Virginia is, is very knowledgeable about these royals. She knows a lot of them, or did. And you know, when I can get her to have a cogent conversation, she tells me things that like. They take it very seriously, A, who they hang out with. Prince Andrew, you know, and <laughs> God, he's an idiot. Uh, but anyway, that it, it's, but the Queen and now King Charles, it's like they they only consort with people that are, you know, probably of the same vibr- vibratory bloodline thing uh, genetics apparently your ge- some person said your genetics vibrate at a frequency hmm. interesting yeah. I mean, so you know maybe that's how they they know they anoint their little minions with awards and things and um and so uh, there's something to all that um i i think these bloodlines have been watered down but fucking a i mean the committee of three hundred families. If you if you look up a list of CEOs and owners of corporations, like my uncle Tim Mellon owns Pan Am Systems Railroad. Now he's investing in free energy, and he's RFK's biggest donor. He's trying to siphon votes away from Biden, and it'll work. Hmm. Um, he's you know he's one of them. So, but if you look up these people that are CEOs and and you go back in their genealogy, they're of the bloodline. Wow. Like Musk. He's a he's an African or German. Uh Farrell says he's got bloodlines going back to, I don't know, Frederick the Great or something. And hmm. so it's no happenstance that like the Facebook kid. Yeah, he's just some kid from Bumfuck. I don't know where he's from. And he did his genealogy. I bet you could find something interesting. They 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 want these people involved in you know big corporations businesses and and politics and power and you know so a lot of the the senators and congressmen not all but but a lot of them the powerful ones i bet it, my guess is if you did their genealogy they're related like the bushes are related to the royal family right directly yeah. and so mm, yeah and so you know it's not a conspiracy theory you can actually Prove a lot of this. Uh, every president, bar uh, one. Well, yeah, every president, one is related. To, uh, the world, British royal family down the line. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's King crazy. John. I think it's re- they're related to King John of England. Like the, every single one of them. Yeah, right. It's crazy. And so my my crazy theory lately is like the four of us. Um, 
awakened people that I mean, truly awakened people that kind of you know have expanded minds and understand a lot of this high flute shit. Um, do your bloodlines? I wonder if the genetics are there. I know that in our family we were on my mom's side. We were royal advisors in the court of King Henry the Eighth. That's as far as we managed to get. Right. So, so your the advisors are not allowed in a court unless they're bloodliners. I mean, that's what a court is. That's what John no, D. Nobody nobody sent me my check in the mail for the Illuminati. <laughs> it's not a paying gig, <laughs> brother. <laughs> so. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, everyone's like, oh, we're all spiritually awakening. And I'm wondering, hmm, I wonder if a lot of people are of the bloodline. doesn't matter how much. They say most people are related to everybody, but I wonder if there's a percentage-wise because I never knew I was related to. I told that to my sister. She said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, well, this comes from, <laughs> this comes from the top. And so... Uh, she says, "Well, then, then, then the Mary Queen of Scots things was true." And I said, "Yeah, probably." But they they hide some of this stuff. So, well, the Mormons, like, believe it or not, they own uh, ancestry and something, and I think another one. But the, the more like the Mormon Church, was huge. Oh, 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 uh, Blackrock, I mean, Blackrock uh, get the uh, ancestry DNA. They they might have, they might have, but previously it was all it was all Mormon based, and I, I couldn't figure that out. And then I could be completely wrong on this, but I think it's something like if you could prove in your, if you're like all of a sudden I became a Mormon and that I could prove all of my lineage forever that I could be being a Mormon, I could bring all of these dead people with me when I die, and they can get their own planets too. Yeah, that sounds like a scam to me. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I, I, it's, wanted, I wanted to tell Jay this story. You guys have heard this, but it's <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I listen to everybody and just to get a, a holistic picture of everything. And a lot of channelers, uh, you know, they channel ETs and they're like, ETs have great advice, you know, you know, work on your vibration, be positive, help others. Mm. And it, and, but then when the question of religion comes up, the ETs go, well, you know, source is everything. It's everything in the cosmos. And, you know, we're, and they say, well, what do you, what do you do? What's your day job? And they're like, well, we do this, that, and the other, but we, you know, we're always trying to, to do things so we can become closer to source. And so the channeler is like, all right, excellent. And then you get another channeler like, well, you know, that's great. But we, we contacted the six dimensional or seven dimensional guys and they said, yeah, hey, you know, we're doing all kinds of cool stuff, stuff, the galaxy and stuff. And we're still trying to get closer to source. And they're like, oh, well, that's what the other guy said. And they said, yeah, you know, but you know, you should talk to the, you know, the ninth dimensional guys. So somebody channeled the ninth dimensional guys. And they're like, well, you know, we're doing lots of things and, you know, everything's going great and we're really getting, you know, moving along, getting closer to source. And they're like, well, what? A, why can't you know you contact Source for your ninth dimensional? And say, I don't know. We, we're going to put a phone call into the tenth and eleventh dimensional <laughs> guys, but they haven't returned our calls. And so it's like I smell a rat. <laughs> you know, it's like hey, I'm trying to get closer to Source. Got to gotta get to know Source and all. And, and it's like you get higher up the dimension. Hey, we're still trying. You know, yeah, it's, uh, it's, wait it's, a minute. It's, it's the, the cosmological carrot on the stick that we're. Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> The oh, disclosures right around the corner. It's right around the corner. Yeah, it's a big year. It's gonna be a big year. <laughs> There's no answers. They're just, oh, you know, someday you'll be closer to source. Who is this? You know, big Gnostic Sophia email <laughs> vibration cosmic, you know, nurturing force. It's the force in Star Wars. And it's like, I don't think you're you'll you're not supposed to know it. You just yeah. get close and you know, get a cop feel or something. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> quick, quick little squeeze on your way to the bank. On yeah, oh, well, it was great, but we're gonna come down, and then they say that we're gonna come down and hang out with you guys on Earth. We're gonna come down and relearn everything, uh, you know, all the dimensions, and then we'll create a twelfth or a thirteenth. And it's sure. like, boy, that you've done all that work, and you want to come down and learn everything from a different perspective. Holy shit! I hope I didn't choose to do that. Well, the fact, man, like the fact, the fact that you're here on this dimensional plane would suggest that you did choose to do that. We got a lot of dimensions to climb up before we're back to this supposed yeah, source. 
I smell a rat. I think mean, somebody said. <laughs> so yeah. uh, here's your toll contract. Why don't you check all the boxes? I'm like, What's this box? Don't worry about it. Just check them all. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> and then they're like, I can't. What do you think of the uh, of like the whole loosh loosh farming thing? Oh well, here's some, here's something interesting with that because that's that's in the Old Testament. Give Lucifer mm-hmm. his loosh, and so it well, goes by, back by word by the word loosh. You loosh, and so um, you just look it up. Loosh and you give Lucifer his loosh. That's in the Old Testament. So. <laughs> I'm going to get a T-shirt that says that. God (laughs) hates you, John Warner. Give Lucifer his loosh. Right. This is chi, prana, a life force energy. And so it exists. That's what acupuncture and Asian modalities are all about. Yoga and Tai Chi. In fact, I'm hooking up with a guy. I'm going to start doing Tai Chi. Ooh. That's cool. The Germans have a word called schadenfreude. And that means to take pleasure in another suffering. So when we were kids, we would tease a kid and, you know, group, ah, and we all got high off it. Mm. That's loose. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a dopamine serotonin rush. But if you talk to some of the mystical folks, uh, they say, oh, no, no, that's, that's powerful. What do nations do when they stomp on somebody and uh, we're gray? You know, what does Hitler and then high command get? high from you know when they invade Poland and Romania you know this is what Lush is it's not just this sort of adrenal dopamine serotonin rush you're actually uh it's the life force oh, I can't find any reference to Lush in uh... it, it's Alush A-L-U-W-S-H yeah I don't it's spelled by several different names A-L-U-W-S-H Al-Lush. it's been the Quran as well for Luke 4, 1 and 2, Jesus speaks about the duty and alertness that the servants should have while carrying out their duties in their master's house. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I got it. The, it does appear in the Bible, uh, but it's not related to the concept of loosh. That's what I think is going on with this loosh stuff. I think it's real. Um, these satanic groups wouldn't be raping and killing children if they didn't get a high. I mean, yes, they drink the blood and the dream of crown and all that shit. That's a physical... Well, hmm... It's a physical compound of blood with uh, oxygenated adrenaline. But I wonder if loose is more chi energy. I wonder if it's infused with the chi loose. Well, I mean, if they're, doing, if they're doing it in like a ritualistic setting, it's probably like, you know, it's involving. Right. Them. And that's what I, when I read that and I connected all that, I was like, mm. but a lot of people like, cause like it's part of the whole loose thing and like kind of goes into the, you know, the, the Gnostic archon idea of like, we're basically just being recycled and harvested forever and it, you know you got to break out of that cycle which i think awakening people are doing and in fact i i mean i think four of us when we pass away uh we could you know we'll we'll be like hey fuck you i you hope know. so bro you'll never stop learning in the cosmos i'm ready to go on and learn i want to go to some library in a different star system and spend lifetimes learning everything yeah. without you know a deep state and and horror and war and, and negativity and all that shit i just I've had enough with the Earth deal. Yeah, I feel like I my soul's been here for a long time. I'm sure you guys feel the same. I came out feeling four thousand years old. I mean, when I was ten, I, I remember they sent me this. No, I was eight. I said they sent me to the child psychologist. I was in second grade, mm. and this is 1970. And the guys like, your mother taught you to read and write at age two, and I said, yeah. And and he's like, well, they say you have a reading problem, and I said, I just I'm. I don't have a problem. I'm just, I don't want to read that. But <laughs> I'd rather read, the, go to the library and read books on something else. War we'll, usually, you know, we'll <laughs> like it. but that's, yeah. you know, that's what I did. And that's where I got to become a historian is in the school library all my life. I did the same thing, Warner. I, I finished four years in high school and three and they're like, do you want to go to college? And I was like, no, I just went to the library and read all the shit I wanted to read for an entire year. You know, the, one of the reasons I left Twitter is not only I'm just angry, the angry <laughs> man, but it's like um, people are dumb. Sorry, really dumb. Yeah, they, are. they really are. But I realized how addictive it was, and I was like, when I would post something funny, a meme, you know, even with a message, and it's like I I recognized I was getting a dopamine high, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I know exactly what I'm doing with this thing, and I knew that going in, kind of. Um, it wasn't like I was. 
I guess there's a lot of addictive things. I mean, like John and I are into old cars. You know, I distract myself with that. Otherwise, I'd go insane. Yeah, it's like yep. there's a lot of stuff. And YouTube, you know, it, the algorithms feed you flashy things like you know, pink Cadillacs and you know, girls with big tits and you know, and it's like I get it. It's they're they're you could say they're farming your loof. There you go. Because they are, right? they are in a sense. the occult people have always said that outdoor concerts, especially the rock and roll ones, that's just a louche gathering festival, a ritual. Yeah, no one, no one looks up at the giant louche funnel that's above them. <laughs> yeah, you look up, but I, it's, it's a louche. Yeah. Funnel. <laughs> Boy, was that was that a lot of fun getting drunk and high and going to concerts? It was so much fun. Oh yeah, and it'd be the worst thing for me today. I don't like crowds. I can't, I can't stand crowds. And I'm like, huh, it's it's the kind of thing where now you have to check yourself who's sucking energy off me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, alcohol is the same. That's why the Muslims don't drink it because, you know, you black out, a gin goes in your head. What, what do you think about, because this is so, actually, before we, because we might have to wind down soon. It's been a few hours, it's getting a bit late in the UK, but I wanted to talk about yeah. this. Before, guys, I want to get your opinions because people have been, kind of pressuring me to discuss it, maybe get someone on for an interview, the Nazca mummies. I have a personal theory uh, that's combined with others that the Nazca lines are vectors for navigation. Although, why would ET need a vector with UFO and computer quantum? Mm -hmm. So I don't understand the lines either, but some of them look like strip mining. Yeah, you're right. Fire, if you look at the photos, I'll send you to them. Uh, some of the Nazca lines... Uh, they just carved off the top of a mountain. Yeah, dude. And, yeah. and I think this is ancient strip mining. Right. Yeah, the mummies are, are very interesting. I I think some Pete Peterson, uh, that guy whistleblower, a long time ago, he said that there's vast tunnels, well, all over the earth, but mm -hmm. but under Nazca, the oblong-headed people that Brian uh, Brian Furster has his yeah. Brian Forster, yeah, yeah, he's got a... I mean, that is not head-binding. That, that, these are all blonde headed people. There was a, a, some human race back in the day. There's probably a, still a few people with you know, giant heads. You know, not giant that big, but maybe like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's... I, I don't know. There's a million theories on that. But the Nazca mummies look real. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we were talking before there was, it's like, I think there's a little bit of truth and a little bit of disinformation in the whole thing, right? Some of those things that you can't really deny, I mean, like medical evidence, MRI scans, you know, all these independent things. And Brian Forrester has done that. He's at independent labs. This is pre, you know, all that shit coming out of Mexico and everything. But there's um, there's that part of it. And then the Peruvian government trying to shut down their press conference last week or two weeks ago or whatever. That was interesting. Why would they come yeah, in? It was, like the, uh, it was like the Ministry of Culture or something. And they came in and... Uh, yeah, the yeah. Ministry of Silence. <laughs> it's what it is. But this is the yeah. case. Because people, like, a lot of people in the American side of, of the UFO conversation, or, or at least just like the Western side on UFO Twitter, they're all like, nah, this is fake. Like, they ignore this. Like, don't, don't talk about the Peruvian mummies, the, the Nazca mummies. And then... You know, a few other people are going like, no, like we really need to pay attention to this. Scientists have gone out and validated it, and but then there's like stories about some of them being faked in the past. This uh, Jamie Musan or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. like this guy's apparently done like fakes sort of thing. So it's like yeah, yeah. hard to know what's really going on with that. I think they always slip a, a lot of real shit in there with a bunch of bullshit, so that it could just be all dis, you know, disregarded, right? You know, there's always disinformation. Yeah, you know, there's a story. Uh, I like it because it's the Navy. William Tompkins' book, hmm. oh, yeah. it's time of the Navy, and he said that Admiral Boda was briefed by Secretary of the Navy Forrestal, and Forrestal said, "You know, all these crash UFOs. You know, take them to San Diego and study them, but books aren't going to help you. Every single book on Earth has disinformation, and hmm. you're on your own." Now that stuck with me. It's very profound. That's 1940. Six or whatever. Uh, today, obviously, we have counterculture books about all all that stuff, and so I that was probably overblown, you know. But probably back then in America, because Forrestal picked Boda because he was Australian. Mm -hmm. uh, he had he said, "quote uh, He hadn't been mind controlled by the American educational system." Yeah, well, there you go. That's nineteen forty six. So 
I have to wonder, there's, there's books today, I think that have disclosure and truth and, you know, it's all mixed up, but every mainstream history book, science book, I think they're all, it's a mixture of, you know, genuine and real and, and, and bullshit. Well, I, I definitely think, I, I mean, like our history, our ancient history, our understanding of what was really going on, like that's absolutely obfuscated. And, you know, we, we can point towards the, the right institutions that have actually got the information. Like we know that the Vatican's got its archives and the Smithsonian's got its own information. So like, you know, antiquities and, and ancient history and, and the timeline, I mean, things like Gobekli Tepe popping up and kind of disproving it, it will naturally start to get contradicted as it's already begun to get contradicted anyway. But yeah, I mean, like, it's all being hidden in certain ways by certain interests in terms of, like, ancient history and also the science and technology side of it. But, like, I've been digging into, like, the, the kind of psychoacoustic architecture and some of these ancient structures and it's starting... Oh, yeah, that's it's amazing. It, dude, it's fascinating to me. Like, it's just, like, it, it's starting to look like they were using the Earth as a computer. Like, the same kind of technologies that we're leveraging now through different methodologies they were using kind of like the natural compounds of the earth specific geometric placements specific harmonic tones and i find that fascinating because that's a lost science that's only just being rediscovered now it's still kept alive in the mystery schools yeah legit but you know that like in ancient egypt the temple of hathor and the osirian and everything they they postulate you know i think john anthony west and and some others, uh, Robert Bovall, they've done a great job. And they said, you know, they were definitely using frequency in different temples. Maybe you went to a different temple for a different, uh, either a healing practice or a communication practice or or a knowledge boost practice. And that makes sense um, because the pyramids were all about astral traveling and Swiss army knives, you know, power generation and and everything. And so... We're, we're starting everyone everyone's starting to piece this together um but there's still a lot of you know scientists and archaeologists who are just stubborn as hell i mean graham hancock does a good job but he treads that narrow line between mainstream and alternative it was a miracle he got his series on what hbo or Something Netflix. On Netflix. Netflix. On Netflix as well. But it's it's extremely telling just the the proportion of the response from mainstream media to that series being released. I mean, like, what the fuck? They were calling it the most dangerous conspiracy Netflix series ever released. A far right, a racist, like everything they could possibly do. They to attack the shit out of it. Like, yeah. why? Why? Like who who was it within that network at some level of the hierarchy that was like Make sure people do not watch this. Funnily enough, the thing is, when you do that, everyone watches it. Watch <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Like, you completely well, shoot yeah. yourself in the foot. But seriously, like the fact that there was such a, a, a kind of like unified front within the mainstream yeah. media, demonizing. They called Graham Hancock, who's got a black wife, racist. They were like, he's promoting yeah. white, like pro white conspiracy theory. He it's just the maddest thing. I couldn't believe it's, it. It's because it's because obviously there's factions within the media systems and, and in the world, you know, Hollywood and everything. There are factions now, and it looks like people with you know light gray hats or have a little more sway. Um, but it uh, it shows you they know people are so stupid. I'm sorry uh, that they won't do their due diligence and fact checking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's I mean, it. I, I got criticized for something by somebody, and I said, "Okay, <laughs> okay, pal, go read these books." And the person actually did it, and they were like, "Oh, you're right. Sorry." <laughs> there you go. There that's you. that's you know, really, really refreshing. But right. that one person, you know, and sadly, you know, I'm not saying the world is stupid and ignorant because of their fall. I, I don't think it's fault. Well, I think it's just a, our society is carefully engineered our reality, and. Um, but now we're seeing little chips of armor, you know, splinters of armor uh, coming off. It's a slow process. It's, it's, you know, like everyone wants disclosure. And it's like, I always say, disclosure of what? Because there's a shit ton of stuff. And, um, you know, everyone's like, I just want to study ancient Egypt. And I said, well, that's linked to ex extraterrestrials. And they're like, I'm not interested in extraterrestrials. I don't, I don't. And I'm like, no matter where you go, in history, 
It doesn't make any sense unless you plug ET in and commerce and trade and interaction and, and uh, you know, marrying and you know, mating and, and all that stuff. It doesn't make any sense. You know, and that's the thing. People don't like that. They, they want to do one little thing over here. You know, and, you know, it's it's trying to find people that are truly open minded to see the holistic big picture. It's it's really hard. Um, you know, I've talked to people. I'm sure you guys have. I'm open minded at night. You're open minded this much on some things. And, you know, religion is, is a hot topic to, to try to part. That, that argument is just it's moot. It, it's a never end. And that's the point, I think, mm-hmm. to religions. It's, they're so subjective and, and everything. It's like you'll never get anywhere. And, and I think, you know, even to be fair, Joseph Farrell said that. He said, you know, all my years at, at uh, Oxford, I learned a lot about religion. And that's where I got into the conspiracy because it's in the religions, religious stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I want to get for hard answers there. Yeah, you know, no, you'll only find more questions, tantalizing clues and suggestions. Some bullshit, a lot of bullshit. <laughs> you know, the deep state owns the law, so everyone's like, you know, oh my god, you know, we got to sue these people. You know, like Danny Sheehan and Greer, they want to sue the U.S. government. And I'm like, I-, I wrote them both an email. And I said, you know, I got some. I got a friend who's a federal judge. And he tells me, you know, if 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 a program is unacknowledged and it's a special access black program, it's outside of the jurisdiction of the law. All can't touch it. So anybody can get up there, Chris Mellon or Abby Loeb, and oh, I'm not, you know, that's illegal. I would never be involved in that. And they're telling the truth because, you know, if you're, they call Chris Mellon the the mayor of Area 51. Jack Sarfati found that out. And so it's like, you know, it, the law is so interpretational, but in in that regard, in, into the military industrial complex, that whole corporate world, um, if something's national security, lack program, it's outside the law. That's that's why it's unacknowledged. So it's like, uh, everyone's like, oh, we got to sue the government and get the truth. And I'm like, it's very deep. Yeah, I have the truth. You'll never have the truth. Hey, I got to love you guys, but I got to run. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the UK, bro. We're going oh. to bed, bedtime. That sounds all right. Yeah. <laughs> good night, right. guys. Thank you. It was really good. Oh.